I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. Become a master of all you array. Our decorating is classic and timeless, as is our advice. So today we're sharing a classic DTT episode from the archives with you. Hey everybody, I'm Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks. Today's episode is Vignettes, a Masterclass. You know, I think people are creating vignettes, but they really might not even know that's what it was that they were doing. Very true. So because it's a masterclass, we're going to start with the definition and we're going to tell you what it is, why you do it, why you should do it, where you can do it, and give you some tips and then finish off with some actual items that we think would look great together in your vignettes. You want to define it for us, Anita? Sure. It is a small grouping of objects that creates a pleasing focal point, but it's also defined as a harmonious tableau made from a variety of items rather than a collection of similar items. And I think that's an excellent point because you may have a grouping of clocks or pictures, maybe toy soldiers or seashells, but that's a collection and not a vignette. So I think that's an important distinction to make. I do too. It's objects that relate to each other in some way, and they tell a little story. It's not a collection of same things. So these objects could relate to each other in a very loose way in that you just love them all, and that's the through <laughs> like line, that. or a, a color, perhaps, or some sort of theme or feel, but yes, not a collection. I think Anita made a great point in the beginning that you might be doing this and you don't even know you're doing it. You didn't have a name for it, but it's sort of natural just to put things together that you like. And if you're putting any sort of decor around your home, which most people are, maybe not to the extent that crazy decor lovers like ourselves are doing, but almost everyone is displaying something, whether it's some photos or something they bought in their travels or something someone special made for them or gave to them. So you might be creating vignettes and you don't even know it. But let's talk about why this is important in your home. It, again, is not just frou-frou. It is important. It's part of creating that sanctuary. It's part of creating that personalized space that lets you go, ha, ah, when you get home, that lets you unwind, that reminds you of the important people in your lives or the important places that you've been or brings back memories or is just a shape or a color or a design that is really pleasing to you. So firstly, you want to create these vignettes because they are going to mean something to you. So again, you're not just going to go and buy uh, several items in one fell swoop and, and slap them together and call it a day and that's your vignette. It should be things that are special to you that are from different times in your life or different places or different people. So it's going to allow you to express your creativity, create beauty and interest in your home. Well, let's talk about what if you don't have a vignette, then what do you have? You have either an empty space or just one item or Things that are maybe on a table that are just kind of uh, randomly placed there. So this is a purposeful gathering of things that are put together. And when you put them together, you really have a situation where it has more visual weight and impact when they're all together. If you just have one piece there, it's interesting. But when you have a vignette, there's something about everything being put together, the way it's put together, the contrasts and similarities that is a thing of beauty. It's like a piece of art, really, putting all those things together. Yeah, I'm shaking my head because that's what I was thinking while you were saying all that. It is a piece of art. It's a work of art. So you may not consider yourself a, a fine artist. And you may not be able to do anything with a paintbrush or a My pencil. medium is vignettes. <laughs> yes, your medium is vignettes and the canvas is your home. 
So where could you do this? Well, pretty much any horizontal surface is just calling out for a vignette. So think of entry table, hallway table, coffee table, nightstand, end table, dining table for sure, dressers, bookcases, mantles, a credenza, a sideboard, just about anywhere that you can lay something, stand something, put something, and have enough room to sort of group them, you can create a vignette. Well, and I want to add to that, if the piece of furniture that you're creating your vignette on is next to is in, next to a wall, then that wall can be part of the vignette. The artwork or mirror on the wall becomes part of it. But that's not always the case. If it's a dining room table or a coffee table, then you would not be including the wall. Absolutely. And that can be really interesting, particularly if the background is a mirror. So say in your entry way, you might have a mirror and then you might have a table or something in front of it. And that mirror may reflect what's going on in the vignette or it can act as part of it. Or if there's wallpaper behind the vignette, that can sort of be part of it. And then you have these other ones that are more floaters. So say the one that's on the coffee table, your coffee table is generally going to be sort of in the the middle of your room or not up against a wall. So that would be a vignette that you're going to see from all sides and it won't have any background that would participate in the vignette. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, you can have definitely a uh, 360 view on that type of vignette. Also on the dining room table, you would want to take in consideration what it looked like from behind. It's kind of like when you're creating a floral. If you know the floral is going to be up against something, you kind of cheat and have all the wow flowers in the front. (laughs) You don't have to make it go all the way around. So that's something to consider when you're creating the vignette and also the type of impact that it's going to have. Another thing to really keep in mind is the scale. Because if it's just a small little table by a bed or a chair, then you're going to have a smaller scale vignette. And probably you wouldn't, for example, maybe have room for a lamp there if it's a super small table, like just for a a snack or a, a drink table. But when you have a dining room table, then we're talking bigger scale, especially if you have perhaps a buffet or some sort of piece of furniture pushed up against the wall and you're including maybe a large mirror there, then we're talking, you know, you can have lamps and all kinds of things that are, you know, quite large there as part of your vignette. Absolutely. You want to dive into the tips? The first thing to think about when you're putting the vignette together is what is your hero piece going to be? So this is going to be the piece that is really the focus, the piece that's your favorite piece, the piece that you want to really shine. So I think you want to have at least one piece that's kind of a a wow piece, so to speak, in your vignette. And, And really, this is something that really appeals to you or just has a particular presence that you want to highlight in your vignette. I like that approach because as we say in a room, you can't have too many focal points. So in a vignette on a very small scale, you should also not have competing focal points. They should be the main piece, like Anita saying, the most important piece is the star. And then you have some co-stars because you don't want everybody vying for the attention because then the whole vignette won't work well together. My initial thought when creating a vignette is to choose an odd number of pieces to be included. So three is perfect. Five is good. I think when you get beyond that into seven and nine, it starts becoming a little unwieldy. I know you can create a vignette of sorts in a corner of your room with furniture and whatnot, But really, when you're talking about a true vignette, it's a smaller grouping. It's more decorative items. So I would stick to three or five tops. I think that's a good number. And then when you're putting your items together, typically you're going to put the tallest piece in the back and kind of in the center, although not necessarily. It can go over to the side depending. I mean, this is a rule that you can break, but clearly you don't want the the tallest thing in the front that's blocking the view of the shorter things in the back. Particularly if you're creating it on a table that is against a wall or something like that. You have a little bit more play with it when it's on your coffee table or dining room. But I agree wholeheartedly that you don't want to have the bigger piece right in front. So I would approach 
one of those floating vignettes from how am I to appreciate this from which vantage point? And then I would arrange the items from that vantage point. You know, sometimes you might be walking into the room from the other way, but when you're coming into the room, the primary way, or when you're sitting on the sofa, you want to be looking at the vignette with the bigger piece in the back. I would also suggest corralling everything. We talk about trays, I would think, in almost every other, if not every episode, the word tray comes up because they are so essential in decor and particularly when you're creating these little works of art called vignettes. You want to have something that is going to anchor your vignette, like a nice size rug is going to anchor your furniture in a room. So it doesn't have to necessarily be a tray per se, but something that would act like a tray. It could be even a runner on a dining room table. It could be a a wood uh, plank shaved off. It could be something like that. It doesn't have to have the actual form of a silver or lucite or gold tray. Well, I agree with that. And I think the smaller your vignette, the more you would probably need to use a tray so to mm-hmm. kind of say, hey, this is a vignette and kind of keep everything close enough together so that it is actually seen as a grouping and a vignette. Now, if we're talking about a vignette where you have large things like, you know, pretty sturdy lamps, then it's probably going to be too big for a tray. Now, I do have several large trays, but I, I don't really ever put a put a lamp in a tray. So I'm- I agree. I agree with that. And in my entryway, I have the lamp and then I have the tray next to it, okay. sort of on an angle. And then I create my vignette on there. So when you look at the whole thing, it's kind of a unit. The lamp is definitely part of it. But then if you drill down to the, the three items that are sitting on the tray, that's the real vignette. And another thing to keep in mind is to have everything varying heights. The last thing you want is everything exactly the same height. That will destroy any vignette and it's going to make it feel off. So that's really critical that you have varying heights, but within the same sort of scale, so to speak. So you don't want there to be some pretty tall things and then they look like giants and then you have some little small things in front that just don't even look like they go together. So it needs to be in the same uh kind of like people you know people are what like five feet to seven feet in general so that's kind of like your your vignette but you don't want to put them with a two foot person uh that then it's going to look right. off. like i would not be in a vignette with lebron james like that right. would look weird <laughs> <laughs> so like, he's way too big i'm way too little we are not gonna vignette well together i absolutely agree and the height variations can be sort of cheated or really artfully designed, right? You can elevate certain items, either use a stack of books, which can then become part of the vignette. That is, you know, one of your three or five five items. And um, you don't have to count each book, like the books. If there's a stack of three, it could be, that's like one thing really when you're considering the vignette. Mm-hmm. So you can elevate something. If it feels too small, Um, then you can put it on a stack of books. You can put a little piece of art on an easel. You can sort of cheat it that in this very artistic way to get the heights correct. So it really feels good. What, what I've seen happen sometimes is someone will put a taper candle, a skinny taper candle, and then two things that are kind of relatable in height, medium size and small, but then you have this really pointy taper candle behind it. Well, the easiest thing to do that is, you know, don't leave your house when you do it, but burn the candle down a little bit. Get it to the height where it starts to make sense with the other two items. So that's just a really obvious example of a way that you can manipulate the heights to make the pieces play together better. Well, I want to focus on this for a second because I think you're really on to something. Use of a riser really does make a sense in a lot of vignettes and if you have something you really want to use and it's too short that is the beauty of using a riser and then the riser becomes part of the vignette and adds to the interest of the items and yes I prefer old books but you could use a beautiful book a pretty little column pedestal there's so many things that you can use as a riser I mean be creative And, uh, but this is a great way if you have something beautiful you want to use and it's just not tall enough, boy, that riser is going to make a massive difference. 
I have something at the end that really fits the bill of what you're talking about with regard to a candle. So when we get to the actual items, I'll talk about that. But anything that will lift something up a little bit, um, even a lucite block, you can buy those. And those are really useful. That will be in your vignette toolbox for forever. Uh, another thing you want to make sure you're doing is varying the texture. I think Anita mentioned earlier on, you didn't want every piece in the vignette to be ceramic. You know, it mm -hmm. all looks the same. Mm -hmm. It has the same visual impact. You want to change up the texture. So that might be as simple as including a small plant. You know, if you have feel, feel like you need to break it up, if a lot of your decor is um, a porcelain or your decor is metal, you could break it up with simple items like that, a little ivy and a little planter, or even I love to incorporate, I have this thing about string and yarn. I mean, I guess maybe, maybe in a past life. It's a texture. Life, there you go. Yeah, it's a texture. But maybe in a past life, I was a knitter or something like that. My grandma did try to teach me to crochet and I didn't pay attention. I wish I had. But I love balls of yarn, balls of t baker's twine even. I have a couple of rolls of baker's twine that I just have in a drawer. And every once in a while, if I need some texture in a little vignette, I'll just plop one of those in there. And it does the job so easily. It's a different shape. You have the roundness. It's more organic. And then you have all that yummy texture. So here's another idea. If you have something that's too short and you don't have a riser or you don't want to use a riser, the other thing you could do is to cover it with a cloche. Mm -hmm. The cloche gives it importance, and then you have the height of the cloche. But the secret is here, you can't have too much air space in there, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes. So you're going to be like, what is in there? So you're still going to have to use a riser if the thing, if the cloche is taller, is a lot taller than the item you're putting it over. Absolutely true. And something you, I wanted to touch on, you don't want to make everything in your vignette super small. It's a small work of art, but it's not teeny tiny. It's not dollhouse scale. Mm -hmm. So not only do the items need to relate to each other well in scale and balance, proportion, but the whole thing should not be made up of tiny little things because it really won't have that much of an impact. And, you know, you really don't want to have to go over and get so close to it to really appreciate it. So it has to have some oomph to it to really be important in your house. Exactly. I mean, this needs to be something that you can walk by and see kind of from the other side of the room. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, because and that is something that, that we see where people have very small decor items sitting out. And if they're really small, just put them up that they're not really going to be the proper size. Another thing to think about is to put the vignette together so that it's asymmetrical. Uh, sometimes you want some symmetry, but typically in a vignette, you don't. You've got three or five different items, so there's just not going to be symmetry. And so you actually want to celebrate that asymmetry, just kind of arrange them in a way that, that embraces that asymmetry. Right. And if you do the odd numbers, it's almost built in. True, true. I mean, I guess you could have two exact same things and one thing in the middle and those things would be symmetrical, but you really don't want to do that in a vignette. The, the three or five items should be all different. Save symmetry for your mantle or something else. That's not what you want to be happening in your vignette. It's also an opportunity uh, to bring in a pop of color. So here's a tip. If you're bringing your accent color through your house, see if you can work in that accent color into a vignette or two. And then that'll help you get that flow of that accent color throughout your house. And that can be a really simple thing to do. I mean, if it's a color that you can get in spray paint, then you can just spray paint something that you already have that you don't really like the color of. And bam, now you have this accent color contained in your vignette and it's helping your eye move around the room and achieving that flow. Let's talk for a minute about this color that you're talking about because I'm noticing a lot of people have gone with neutral rooms and we love have you noticed that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've noticed. And, you know, we love uh, neutral furniture. I think it's very flexible. But when you have a room full of neutrals, you need to add color somewhere. So this is a great way to add that color back in the room. And I think it makes the room more interesting. You don't want everything to be the same color. And so you do have to be careful when you have neutral furniture. Add color with artwork. 
rugs, and with those accessories in your vignette. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Another tip for vignetting. Is that a word? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's a verb that was good. for vignette. That was good. Okay. So if you're vignetting, you can add a seasonal item. Now you know, everyone, we are not big seasonal decorators, but we do like a little nod to the season and it's fun. It's nice. You got a little something for the seasons, but you don't have to go overboard. So you can have a vignette and then you can just take out let's just call it the third item, maybe the smaller item, and pop something in for the seasons. That's kind of along the lines of those decor hotspots that I uh, really love to have and I've talked to you about in my home. I have areas where I do a vignette, and that's really what a decor hotspot is for me. I'm not pulling a sofa out and changing the chair. What I'm doing is creating vignettes in these places throughout my house. But I already have the tray, the candle or the lantern or the bigger piece and then I'll just swap out maybe one tops two of the pieces that are in the vignette and when a holiday is rolling around that's a great time to pop in something that would be a little nod to the the current holiday excellent excellent idea and I think that is a great place to add those seasonal touches uh that are smaller so you're not spending a lot of money on all the seasonal things that are going to come and go And just like you said, you can have a bowl there, a lantern, or a cloche, and that's where you can put those seasonal things, and Mm -hmm. you can keep that bowl there all year round, but each part of the year, it's going to have something different. In the spring, that's where you're going to put those golden eggs that you have, Kelly. And then at Christmas time, you're going to put those uh, Christmas ornaments in there. So uh, I think it's a great place to put seasonal things. And another thing I want to talk about, because with seasonal, we're talking about changing it out with the seasons. I think we also get bored 
mm-hmm. with our homes. And rather than go buy new furniture, just change out that vignette on your coffee table, on your dining room table, on your buffet, and then it's going to give it a whole fresh look. You're going to feel happy when you go in there. And here's a fun thing to do. Bring a bunch of things into the room and try changing certain things out. Take a picture of every different variation of your vignette. Then you're going to look through your pictures and you're going to pick the ones that look the best or pick the, your favorite and go with that for for the season. I love doing that. I usually choose to do that maybe on a Sunday morning. It just kind of overcomes me. I look at what's going on. I'm like, ah, that's been there for too long. Or gosh, you know, it is Christmas and those golden eggs are still there. Like We need to get those out of here or vice versa. And I will go to my stash cabinets and it's like I'm seeing old friends. I get to look at my stuff. You probably feel that way about your dishes, right? You get to like up close and personal with them. You bring out your decor items. I'll pull a few things out. Maybe you have to dust them off a little bit because they've been in the cupboard for a while. And that is so much fun. And it really kind of recharges my battery. It is a really creative thing to do. It You can limit yourself to a half hour, an hour. I mean, goodness, you could spend all day doing it if you wanted to. But it rotates your things out. It gives you an opportunity to reevaluate them, appreciate them, and then display them in a way that really will enhance your home and that you'll really enjoy. I love seeing my stuff. Um, And also think about your functional items and how you can create vignettes for them. We talk about beautiful storage. We do not believe in plastic storage if we can get away with having something else. If you don't need to have the plastic for functional reasons, get yourself some beautiful storage items. The same goes for your functional items. They can be vignetted too. You know, your laundry detergent doesn't have to just sit in the plastic thing and be ugly. Or on your bathroom vanity, or if you have a little area where you do your makeup or something like that, Get yourself a tray. Maybe you have some old pretty perfume bottles. Maybe you don't use them all. Maybe you only use one scent or whatever. But if they're pretty, you can bring them back out. Make a pretty little vignette there. A beautiful thing to add there, of course, is maybe a little bud vase, even a candle. So you can create this beauty throughout your home, and it can also be functional. I think that's a great idea. And now we want to talk to you about what we really like to use in our vignettes. I think this is going to vary depending on what your style is. The things that I like to use are a plant, usually a green plant, but it can be a a blooming plant, but I like to use real plants. Uh, I like to use something silver and blingy, like maybe an antique trophy. Uh, I also collect hotel silver, so I have some hotel pick, uh, coffee pots. They're kind of cool, really small ones, you know, individual size. So those are fun. And some antique creamers or pitchers, a cloche with or without something under it. A small vintage paintings are really fun to use. Uh, I do like to use old books as a riser. Little vintage boxes are nice for risers. Candlesticks, um, lamps, vases of varying various sizes and uh, designs. And then I do like to use a tray if it works with a vignette. Yes to all those items. I think if you are new to this and you want to have a core or the term everybody likes to use right now is capsule. So other than a capsule wardrobe, you have a capsule vignette collection. So I would say a lantern or a candle. Mm-hmm. A stack of books, if you're into vintage, great. If not, you know, some other types of books would be great, but please, not paperbacks, nothing like that. And then your third item can be really flexible. Um, and then the tray. So if you had the tray, the lantern, or the candle, and a stack of books, I think you are good to go to start creating. And then you can get really uh, artsy and creative with that third item. It can be a piece of coral that you collected. It could be the ball of twine that I have heartstrings for. It could be anything that um, means something to you and that works with the proportions and the balance of the vignette. I love to use little easels in my vignettes as well. And I have one that I found for you. It's small, wooden. It's about 12 inches tall. It's raw wood, but you could definitely stain it or paint it a color if you wanted. But it's just going to kind of go away. But wouldn't that be great in a vignette to put a tiny little 
painting that you may have come across at a thrift store or something like that. Or I love vintage postcards, something like that could sit on it. Or even your kid's artwork, if it's on smaller scale, a little something could sit on that and really highlight it like a cloche does. Because if you put something on an easel, it's saying, you know, you ought to look at this. Great idea. That You're right. It does kind of elevate it. Literally and figuratively. <laughs> So do you have some items that you like to use that you're some specific ones that you've chosen for the episode? Well, I found some items just around on the internet. I mean, obviously you can say, oh, you know, go and you can find this at your thrift store or consignment store. But, <laughs> you know, that's, as you know, the thrill of the hunt. Uh, we really can't point you in the direction of that other than to say, try Etsy, try eBay, you know, definitely get out there and, and go thrifting. We wish you luck. You're kind of on your own on finding those. But there's so many wonderful things on the internet. So these are just some things that I came across that I thought would look great together. And then you can rift off that. So there's a tray from the Rivet collection, which I think is the Amazon collection. It's a really beautiful tray. I don't like trays with sides that are too high when you're creating a vignette. I don't want it to feel like it's more of a food tray. I want something that's a little more sloping. So this one is sloping. It's kind of a, a ovally organic shape. It's gold on the edges, very simple handles, and then it's lacquer black, black on the inside. And then I would pair that with a, a pillar candle. Now you could use a real candle or you could use one of the battery operated ones. But what I found were these little pedestals for candles. Now, of course, you could pedestal just about anything on there probably, but there are four candles. And it's a set of two. They're different shapes. They're kind of a brushed gold. They would look great with the tray. So I would have that. And then I found a brushed gold set of two planters. They're six by six inches. So I would do a bit of a taller plant, maybe not an ivy, something that would go up a little bit, maybe a small sized peace palm, a little one, you know, those kind of four to six inch uh, house plants that you can sort of find anywhere, Home Depot, your local nursery, something like that, but something with a little height. So my plant would be the taller one. It would be in this brush gold uh, planter, which again, you're getting a set of two. And then I would have a pillar candle on this little candle pedestal, again, set of two. And then I found this really cool gold spiky sea urchin. It's just like a piece of decor that nobody needs for survival, but it's so <laughs> cool looking. And that I feel like that little piece would be one of my go-tos. Like that would be kind of like the thing I grabbed to add in to a lot of different vignettes because it is going to have be a little wow. So you've got a plant that's nice, but it's not necessarily going to be wow. Then you have a candle, which is great because it's maybe adding a little light or ambiance and it's elevated. But then you have this little wow moment, which is this golden sea urchin spiky little ball thing. So all of that will be linked in the show notes. And I think that all sitting on this gold and black lacquered tray would be dynamite. I love that. That sounds perfect. And you know what? Three is such an easy number to work with. And that's what I did for my uh, vignette that I put together with some items. And I'll have links to all of these as well. So I started with a classic item, which is a blue and white ceramic ginger jar. But this one's a little more modern take on it. It's got uh, flowers and leaves. And it's got dark blues, light blues, and a little bit of white. So I thought that was really pretty. And that is going to be the tall item. I think it's about 18 inches tall. Then I chose a cloche to go with that that's only nine inches tall. And for inside the cloche, you can leave it empty or put something in. I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to leave it like that. But, you know, you could put whatever you want into that. And I've sourced that one for you. And then I found a beautiful planter from Terrain that's handcrafted in Italy. And this uh, comes in different sizes, but it's got a, it's kind of a gray and it's got scalloped edges. It's really beautiful. So you're going to put a plant in that, maybe a little ivy or a little fern. But I think it's so nice. If you're just going to have three things in your vignette and one of them's a plant, why not make the pot something really beautiful and something that's going to really catch your eye? So I don't want to miss that opportunity to really add a layer of detail. So I think it is nice to use a nice pot when you can. So those are the three items and they're various sizes. Notice they're different materials. There's something ceramic, there's something glass, and then there's a pottery piece. 
that has, and then the plant inside the pottery. And then I found a really interesting tray. It's called a distressed zinc tray. It's 22 inches, which I think is a nice size. It's actually made of iron, and but on the finish does look like zinc with also some rust on it. And like you said, Kelly, it's a very small rim, but this is, so it's kind of a rustic look. But I like that this is a nice size tray because so many of the trays that we see are more, like you said, made for carrying food and they're not that big. And this is clearly meant to be a decorative tray to use for a vignette. So I'll include the links to all of those, but I think that would make for a a lovely look. So pretty. And I love terrain. I mean, really anything they produce. So I'm sure that pot is gorgeous. Well, the tray is from terrain also. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt okay well i'm definitely gonna have to go check those out okay so what's our definition today trump loy it's a, a term that i used to hear a lot a long time ago but i just was thinking about it again it's a french term it means fool the eye so it is a two-dimensional painting designed to look like a three-dimensional object or scenery. So one way you might see trompe l'oeil would be on a wall, and it might depict, there might be a painting of a window and then a scene outside the window, but really it's it's not a real window. It's just painting on the wall. So that's the fool the eye part. Or you might see a painting on the wall of an alcove and with some flowers in it. But again, that's just a, a mural that's on the wall. And if you want to see some really interesting Trump Loy, search online for street illusion. And you're going to see lots of examples of Trump Loy where the artist made the street look like there's a big hole or a deep canyon in the street or maybe even a wave on the ocean. But it's also a technique used on furniture. Uh, but again, just, just search online and you're going to find some really interesting ways that people have used Trump Loy. Wow. Watch your step. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No kidding. My crush today is a home decor book that I have been enjoying and savoring, I should say, really. It's called Feels Like Home by Lauren Lease. 
uh, L E I S S. She has a wonderful Instagram. She has a great blog. I think it's called pure style and she has been around for a while on the internet, but she also does a lot of work in the Northern Virginia area, which was kind of interesting for me because my husband's from that area. So I'm pretty familiar with the towns that she was talking about as she has about three or four homes. They're not necessarily real before and afters in this book. It's mostly afters, which I really, I do like a good before, but the afters is really what I'm I'm, I'm after, so to speak. <laughs> I just really liked her whole vibe, her whole approach to decorating. And obviously the photos are stunning. So you could check her out on her Instagram and we'll link the book in the show notes. My crush is Tiny House Nation on Netflix. So they showcase a family that's moving into a tiny house, explain why they're going to do it. And then they cover the construction and all these interesting details they add for storage or other ways to smartly use that small space. And I have zero interest in moving into a small house, a <laughs> tiny house, let me say it that way. Uh, but there's something fascinating about these houses and how they've made use of every little tiny nook and cranny and space in there. And it just fascinates me. I thoroughly enjoy watching the show, but have zero interest in living in one. So how tiny is tiny? You're talking about like hundreds of square feet or? Maybe 200. <gasps> oh my gosh. Maybe 300. I mean, they're, they're, you know, I don't know. They're different. I don't know how you calculate the space too, because a lot of them have lofts uh -huh. for, for sleeping. So I, I don't know. I mean, maybe some of them, now there's probably, they're like, but I don't know. I mean, maybe they're 500 square feet. They don't, I don't really remember that part. Right. Well, there's probably a range in which you're, you're in the tiny but house a thousand, realm. It's not a thousand. Not even a thousand. No, no, no. It's not that big. No, I mean, I'm not even sure it's 500. That's what I'm saying. These are small. Wow. It but maybe, that would be a, yeah, oh, maybe 300 is what they are. I don't know. Wow. Well, I'm sure you get a lot of great tips about storage and then you could just apply that to your own sort of normal sized home. Yeah, but the reality is you just, yeah, if you moved into these houses, you'd have to get rid of a lot of stuff. I think you'd have to go with that capsule everything, capsule clothing. <laughs> yeah, and you have to be able to fit it in a capsule. <laughs> exactly. So it's just like, you know, two plates and then you just wash them every meal and then use them again. <laughs> wow. Okay. You couldn't do that. No. I'm telling you, I mean, I could use that for my plate storage. <laughs> tiny house for your dishes <laughs> don't give me ideas <laughs> okay before we go i want to mention the wonderful video that kelly created for us on youtube it's on her channel my soulful home and it is one of our most popular podcast episodes decorating do's and don'ts and there's a slideshow of photos that you can look at so you know you don't have to just have audio so if you're looking for some pictures if you want to see what our houses look like check out this video and we're hoping to have some more in the future. Oh yeah, we'll definitely have some more. Well, let us know if you like it. Head on over to My Soulful Home on YouTube. We'll have the link in the show notes and subscribe to the channel. Click the notification button and leave us a comment. Let us know what you think and definitely come over, be a looky-loo. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. Anita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult. We can't wait to talk to you.